called basic standard and enhanced so you come into the jail if you haven't come from another prison where you're already enhanced you come here as standard so everyone starts as a standard prisoner and if you do good things and get positive IEPs you can go and get enhanced and likewise if you do the opposite you can drop to basic I do think basic works you know it does give people prisoners a reminder of, you know prisoners can get comfortable they can get comfortable in the jobs they can get comfortable with the wing staff, they can start and become cheeky sometimes kicking them off your landing and chucking them on the basic wing for a couple of weeks can sort of bring them back down to earth again and make them realise that they're now better than anybody else so yeah I do think the basic regime works to a certain degree but again the basic re regime is putting more prisoners in the cell for longer and it's what I disagree with you know there should be more, if you drop into basic there needs to be more people getting involved as to why. Why do people why are people drop into basic? Most people are dropping because using drugs, um, failing drug tests, using phones, getting caught with phones, um, fighting. So we need to be acknowledging more why. You know, there are these um, prisoners in the prison that I worked at that would work with the basics. And again, you know, you get some good prisoners that would completely take that job on board and do exactly what it says on the tin. He would go out there and try and help them. There's other prisoners that would abuse that, having that job. So he's abusing the fact that he can go on and help the basic prisoners. But what really he's doing is having access to other areas of the prison. So if he wanted to, you know, drop drugs off or phones off, he could do that. So it could work. The basic regime could work with a bit of tweaking here and there, I think. What's the book called again? So the book's called The Secret. So it's The Secret by Rhonda Bryn. And the theory behind it is whatever you think you were trapped... So, I'll give you an example. When I started getting quite good at the secret, um, one thing that, um, believe it or not, people probably look at me and think, you're already still poor, okay? But I have lost a fair bit of weight. Um, I was a size 22, I'm now a size 16. Um, and I don't diet, I eat what I want. Um, and rather than sitting there and constantly stressing, oh God, look at this on my belly, oh God, look at my love handles, oh God, I've got cellulite on the back of my legs. All of these things that I used to be complaining about was actually attracting more things from the universe to give me. So every time I joined White Watchers or Slimming World, I would put on white, I used to get so, so angry and frustrated and be like, why isn't this book working? Why isn't everything that I'm thinking working? I'm thinking positive, I'm thinking I want to lose weight. I wasn't, I was thinking was weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, I don't look good enough, I need to lose more, I need to do this, I need to do the other. And I was attracting more weight. The minute I started counting my blessings for having two legs and two arms, two eyes that work, two ears that work, work um, just normal things, being able to walk, walk into the shop, just being able to walk to the shop. I broke my toe about six months ago. I've got two children. I couldn't imagine what it's like for some mums that raise children with one or no legs. So the minute I started counting my blessings for other health benefits, I started to lose weight. I started to become healthier. Same with money. You know, the more times I used to walk around the supermarkets with them scanners thinking, oh, fucking hell, I've got to try and stay in this budget. The more panic I would attract, the more things I would attract and reasons to be skint. The minute I threw that scanner thing and be like, do you know what, I'm just going to walk around the supermarket and be grateful. Grateful for food, grateful that I can feed my family, grateful for the things that my money is able to buy. My money got better. So yeah, that book is a really, really good read. I recommend it to anybody. I re used to recommend it to all the prisoners. If prisoners are watching this, they're probably thinking, is she fucking us again about that bastard book? Trust me, <laughs> that book has saved my life. And I really hope it saves everyone else that's struggling. Did you used to be on a, para para on a paramedic on the TV? No, no, I've never done paramedic. I don't really like blood. That's one thing that being a prison officer, I didn't like to deal with. You know, I'd rather get stuck in with a scrap than open up a cell that's just covered in blood because I just, I'm just queasy. So now I won't be a good um, paramedic. My brother, Michael, died in prison for having the wrong prescription. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't heard of it and that's absolutely awful. Awful. I know people that um, have lost loved ones in prison and seen the aftermath of what it can cause and I'm sorry that you had to go through that. It's absolutely awful. Um, one thing that I would say in regards to prisons, people say it's because they don't care. It's not. Most errors that are made in prison is because we haven't got consistent staff and enough staff. 
it's like Chinese whispers, sometimes you'll do a handover and things have happened that quick during the shift, you're trying to get as much information out as you can and jot everything down and things get missed, things slip because we're only human, you have that much pressure put on your shoulders as a landing officer to get things boxed off and things ticked as well as sitting down and having a conversation with them, some of them will think that you're a rude cow for not wanting to sit and talk, you just sometimes don't have time, you know, you've got to get them things ticked that needs ticking. But yeah, I'm really, really sorry that that happened to your brother and for having the wrong prescription as well. It's awful. Absolutely awful. I remember coming back on an escort the once. I took a man out to hospital and he'd been discharged with really, really strong painkillers. He'd had an operation in his groin. And when he'd come back, I'd come back in the next day and he'd come over to me and he said, Miss, they've took that, med that medication off me and put me on paracetamol. And it was only because I was the officer there that could go around to the meds hatch and say, look, this is wrong. And I challenged it and said, no, this prisoner, I remember him. I brought him back in yesterday and he didn't get brought back in with paracetamol. He got brought back in. I think it was with tramadol, something like that. Not drugs that you can have have in your possession but drugs that should have least been in the healthcare's possession ready to give to him so yeah little things like that slip ups like that it happens so glad you left your everything the prison service doesn't need see it's people like this people that can't even have the bollocks to write a bastard name and you're coming on harassing me let me tell you something matey I doubt myself in many areas of my life. I've struggled with mental health. I will beat myself up over every area. One area I will not beat myself up over is being a prison officer. I was a fucking banging prison officer. Absolutely banging. I wouldn't break the rules or overstep that line, but I would have the lads back. It was them I was there for. In the end, I went full circle. I went in there as a selfish 25 year old that wanted to just climb the ladder and progress. And then I ended up leaving, accepting that I was on the lowest rank in there, the lowest paid in there, and I was happy with that. So you can come on there and say, you know, you're everything the prison service doesn't need. What doesn't the prison service need? Love, kindness, a human. Huh? What do you want? A robot? You want me to have my shoulders back behind your door, gents? You want us to punish these men? You were wrong. You were wrong. You were everything that this world doesn't need. The world has got enough negative people in it without people throwing the two pence in off you. Prison bird. Yes, I am a prison bird. Well, I was. <laughs> How did they pick the ones with the red lanyard in Banged Up? What do you mean, the ones with the red lanyard? How did they pick the ones with the red lanyard? I think, do you mean Tony? Tony Gooch was wearing a red lanyard. Maybe get back to me on that one. I have it, read most of it, not finished it yet. Um, worst experience. Um, the probably most frightened, frightened I've ever been was when I was responding to an alarm. So an alarm had gone off and I knew the location of that alarm was right here. So it was on the next landing to my landing. So I knew I was going to be one of the first officers there. But it was also at the same time that Jim was going on. So gym staff had come round to collect so many prisoners off each landing and by the time that they'd done the rounds they had about 80 to 100 men congregated in a corridor ready to be released for gym but there was also a general alarm. So I had to fight through these 80 to 100 prisoners and by the time I'd got sort of through and to the front right here there was a prisoner like this straight in my face and I just didn't know what to do and I saw his fist coming towards me and I shit myself absolutely shit myself what can i say i did i bricked it but luckily there was officers there that just grabbed him and it was literally an inch away from my face it wasn't nothing personal against me it was against the uniform it was against the system it was against he was fucking sick of being messed around and fed up of being pussyfooted around over his medication you know no one would tell him the truth as to what was happening no one would help him so eventually he kicked off you want to go live i'm in jail no i do not want to go live Pretty beard in jail. Oh, I don't know what I've done. Sorry. You security or police? I'm neither, so I was a prison officer. So there's lots of departments within the prison that you can work. So you can work as security. Security wasn't for me. I much preferred like the noise and the hustle and bustle of being out on the landings. I think the man whose story you told about the lorry is in here, he's commented. 
Do you know what? I'd like to say you're probably right, but I don't even think the man I'm thinking of would even have the balls to have a phone in prison. That's how normal he is. He wouldn't dream of doing it. But if you can maybe tell me his name, I'll show it, see if um, it rings a bell. Yeah, miss, thanks for the phone, I'll come watch her. These are people that are just jumping on. I mean, I'm not a prison officer, so I haven't given you a phone. You do um, have prison officers though, that do that, prison officers. I remember um, one prison officer coming in to be searched and he bought in a quality street tin. I was thinking, you know, it might have his lunch in or something like that. It was full of weed and a bloody iPhone. Mm. Baffling. <laughs> oh, you're a prison officer in real life now, so I used to be a pr Steve, miss, eh? Is this Steve the one that was the lorry driver? Because you know what? That is the name I'm thinking of. I am thinking of a Steve. Oh, I know you shouldn't have a phone in prison, but I kind of want it to be Steve. What jail did you work at? I worked at Oakwood. You know Darren Key? No, don't know that one. Dirty screw, need to get your steps in. Keep them coming. Keep on coming. It's awful, isn't it, that some humans, like, um, what's that lady now? I oh, feel awful now, that can't even remember. Caroline Flack. Caroline Flack, you know, all these negative comments can really, really hurt people. I mean, bring it on. You, you, you're really not going to upset me. I know I'm a good person. I'll put my head on the pillow and I'll sleep easy. I'll do my best. So, you can carry on. You're an inspiration to women. Oh, thank you. Do you know what? Honestly, when that video went out, I thought more so women was going to freaking slaughter me. But women are the ones that have held me up. I've had so many positive comments that have come back from women. Um, so thank you, honestly. As much as I try not to let it bother me, again, I'm human. When you read so many comments, you do think, fucking hell, give me a bastard break. So yeah, thank you so much for... Um, same on I'm an inspiration. It's believe it or not, in my opinion, the women. Men say that they're, prov they're providers and they're, pro they're protectors. Let me tell you something, boys. It's us fucking women's, women that are the anchors. We're the anchors. We're behind you, yes. And we're the ones that keep you grounded. If we're the same behind every good man, is an even better woman. That is 110% true. Women do not get given enough credit for what we do. Men will say they have the harder life, they're out grafting, they do the work. No, you don't. No, you don't, and it's as simple as that. We worry more, we carry so much more of a burden, so much more of a responsibility for others. We put ourselves last as mothers, as women. So, yeah, hats off to all the women out there, because we're the ones that look after these boys, let me tell you. And they can sit there and give it the big and say, no, they don't, but they're right, they're wrong. Therapeutic community does really work. I got a lot from it. So where did you do therapeutic community? Then was you in prison when you done that? God, God smacked you. Remembered my story. You brought me to tears. Oh my God! So it is Steve. Steve the lorry driver. How are you doing, mate? Eh? How are you doing? I always think of you, mate. I always, always, always think of you. You're a beautiful person. I could cry now. I really could. Um. Yeah, so this was the prison that I was telling you about, the most normal person, someone that I would happily have in my house, around my kids, around for dinner, normal, a normal person, but, you know, I had to be made to serve that sentence through one mistake, and it's, we're all one bad day away from prison, one bad day away from prison, and for everyone sitting there judging the others that have gone to prison, let me tell you, you just don't know when it might be your turn, because it's not always bad people that go to prison. Do they have access to the internet? No, not unless they're on their phones that they shouldn't have. But nine times out of ten, there's somebody on your landing that's got um, a phone. So yeah, if they want access to the internet, they can. You ain't a prison officer. I've been to every jail in the UK and I've never seen you in no jail. Well, you haven't been to Oakwood when I was there then? And Oakwood's a big prison. You know, it's got a lot of house blocks. You may have been on one house block and not on mine. I worked the same house block. I worked the same landing. It's really not heard of very often that officers stick to a landing. You know, we get 
stressed and want to move. The landings where offices, a lot of officers want to run from, but um, always stayed on the same landing. You say maintaining family ties is a must, but they don't want us to remain family ties. Is that? Yeah, it's massively important that um, family ties uh, uh, remain. People think, you know, oh, they can be sent all over the country. If, you know, you're um, from the Midlands and we send you to a prisoner right at the top of the country and you're the prisoner and your missus is, I don't know, um, on job seekers, can't travel, um, I don't know, might have a disability. Uh, have children that have got disabilities and they can't get up to see them that can cause a um, massive massive stress if family ties aren't maintained families are massively important and it's not just the prisoner that um, suffers it is the family the family goes on the journey with them a lot of the time the family is worrying over them and they don't actually need to worry they're okay but because of the perception of what we've got of what ideas prison is um, families panic and think the worst, think oh my god, you know, he's not going to cope well in prison and yes, yeah, so the families go on the journey with you and it is really important that the main families remain fa with family ties. Oh, okay, in the show some of the ex-prisoners wore red lanyards, they were more the main characters. So now they weren't more the main characters, I think in their show if they were given a red lanyard, it was for a particular job. So in the prison that I had, you could have in the prison that I worked in, you could have um, on your armband, uh, on your arm, a green or red armband, and that would give you access to certain areas in the prison. So it may be something like that. I went to jail for self-defence, one punch, and he still hit his head off the curve and got manslaughter. Twelve and a half years, yeah, exactly. Look at that, Bobby hit somebody once, self-defence, and went to prison for manslaughter. He got twelve and a half years. I don't know who's watching, but I am guessing at least more than half of us have hit somebody in our lifetime. So that's at least, I think, is the 1,000 people watching? I don't know. Um, at least half of those people have hit somebody. I've hit somebody, I'm an officer, I've just said. You know, growing up, all I ever used to do was scrap. Um, not that I'm proud of it, but we've done it. It just goes to show, you know, normal people hit somebody once, you go into prison for manslaughter. Do you work in a male's or female's prison? So I worked in a male's prison. Um, I don't know how I would feel about working in a female's prison. <laughs> I think I'd be all right. Um, I know I wear lashes and tan and I look girly girly, but believe it or not, I'm a bit of a tomboy. Um, and you open my mouth and I'm a potty mouth yam yam. Um, so I got in well in a male prison. I was like one off the lads by the end of it. How come you're in your uniform now? So I said earlier at the start of the video I put the uniform on. I was on and whether to put the uniform on and my decision for putting it on was for two reasons. One, people scrolling through, I'm hoping that people are going to stop and think that's that fucking officer that went viral smoking in that cell. And two, and this is the most important reason, I want people to say that there's a human inside of this uniform or costume, you know, and I've worked alongside other officers that are beautiful people, really caring people that are also humans. We get a lot of bad press. We get a lot of shit. Oh, you know, I was watching somebody the other day on um, TikTok and it was a member of the public challenging a police officer with his phone on record. And I get it. I, I really do. The police, they're enforcing the rules and the police aren't sticking to it themselves. And I understand how frustrating it is. But if we don't unite and work together, we're just going to ruin the country even more. 80,000 men are locked up in prison right now as we speak. 80,000 men in our country. You the wives are at home, lonely, missing the husbands, the children. And it's all right sitting there and saying, oh, they shouldn't have done this and they shouldn't have done that. Like we've just said, this man that's just come up on the comments, he hit somebody once and he served 12 years in prison. You think that all these prisons, people that go to prison, are really bad people? Yes, some of them are. Some of them deserve to be locked up and never have that frigging key put in the lock ever again. You know, they've done some of the most disgusting things, but that's the minority. The majority of people are good people.
bet you want a good one strict but fair so you have to be strict <clears throat> if you're not strict as an officer you just get the piss taken out of you you do you know when you got a supply teacher at school i used to love it get a supply teacher at school and i used to think i am having a fucking laugh in this class today i am gonna run circles around you well for every supply teacher that could potentially be watching i am really really sorry for all the shit that i gave you and trust me karma has returned because i'll get it back now where i did do yeah i did <coughs> how long have you been in the service six years i've done have you ever gone too far with an inmate? No. So as I said earlier, being a female in that sort of environment, you can have prisoners sort of put it on you. If a prisoner puts it on me or was to say, you know, miss, can I have your number? My answer would be, I'll give you an acting thing. Let me, if you ask me that again, I'm going to report it. If I report it, you're going to get a marker on your file that you're rude towards staff or inappropriate towards female staff. You don't want that on your file if you want to get your decap. Something as simple as that, just saying it as straight face, they're like, Oh, fucking hell, I ain't going to say that again. You know, but if you entertain it, they're going to do it more. I remember walking up the stairs the once on a landing and someone behind me shouted, Miss. And just as I turned to look, he was doing that right by my arse in front of the whole landing. So I was like, you know, I didn't want to worry people. So, as long as you're a human being and you can show empathy and some compassion for what they're going through, you can still enforce the rules and they will still listen. You know, I used to threaten to scrap them all the time. Oh, I'm going to freaking twist you up in a minute, mate, with a bunch of girls and bang you back up. You know, humour, they get back behind the door, you don't need to treat them like shit. Are there going to be more episodes of that banged up? Yes. So we've got one more next week and that's going to be the third episode. And then we've got the final one. I think that's going to be in the first week of December and then we're all done. So I think so far we have met on banged up. So we've met Marcus off Gogglebox. His was interesting so I thought he was going to come in and fit in better than what somebody like Neil Perish was. But if you saw on the first episode, some of the prisoners told Marcus to go and G-check Sid from EastEnders and Marcus didn't react too kindly to it did he? So Marcus wasn't welcomed um, we've seen Neil Perish just being an MP and being the one that got caught watching porn in the House of Commons he was bound to get it, he's gonna get the shit and he's getting it as you can see on tonight's um, we've also so I met Harvey, so I think Harvey's only in his early 20s as he said in the VT he's had a very privileged upbringing he, as he's now in, so we've just seen Harvey, he looks a little We've still got a couple of celebrities to um, meet and be introduced, um, so they'll be coming up on the next two episodes, and then hopefully, you know, I can't give any spoilers away, but hopefully by the end of it, you'll sort of see what sort of idea we're trying to get out there, you know, and that is that prison doesn't work, it, it, it doesn't work as much as I can sit here and say, you know, I've worked with some brilliant people, I've worked for a lovely company, You always come back to the, oh public protection, public protection. Well, everyone that's watching this now is the public, and I'm pretty sure. Want all these prisoners locked up behind bars for long periods that they are. You know, it's all right when you don't know them, but like I said, think of one person that you know that's gone to prison. Does he deserve all that time behind the bars? You know. Has it helped him? Probably not. There's other ways that we can help. There is, and hopefully we'll get there. On that note, I'm going to get this uniform off and get into bed. So I've loved doing this live, and I'll definitely do one next week. Um, if you've got any more questions, if you want to throw them on here, what I can do is I can just reply to each comment tomorrow, um, and I'll just do individual videos to the questions that I haven't answered. 
Um, honestly, I really appreciate everyone jumping on and even just hitting me a like. Hopefully, like I say, it spreads the message. And remember what I said earlier, if you are a prisoner, or sorry, if you are an ex-prisoner or you have been to prison and you are struggling to find employment, please drop me a message. Even if you think, I can't really help her, you just never know. You just never know. Or if you're a prisoner that has got a story to tell and you want to do an interview with me, also drop me a message because once we finish doing these lives and bang ups finished in December, we're going to be going straight on to doing some interviews. So the public will hopefully get to meet some prisoners. Um, it's all right what you see in the newspapers. This man's done X, Y and Z. But how about you see him interact with his children? How about you see him just sit down and have a cup of tea with me and just talk about prison? Let's see if your views change then. I'll see you later. Good night. No, don't worry about it. It's fine. Thanks for the orders, everyone. Mexican chicken on a motorway or a pepperoni in your PJs. More corners means more taste. And because you can get a slice and a drink after 4 pm from only £2.60, it's the shape of evenings to come. Greg's. Bags and joy. Prices may vary. See in shop for details. There's extra financial. Right, so I think let's let us add these ones now. If you claim certain benefits, including tax credits and universal credit, you could automatically receive an extra £300 cost of living payments. There's no need to apply. If you're eligible, you'll be paid automatically between 31st of October and 19th of November. Find out more about the full range of...